Okay, so I have to make a smoke monster um, for the show. It's something I keep uh, kicking off. It's one of the smaller, uh, it's not one of the smaller moments, it's an important moment, but it's such an important moment that it became overwhelming and I kept on not doing it because I was working on environments and the music and the, all the other stuff. Uh, so I've had a little temporary thing in there um, that I think looks a little too comical. Um, so we basically need a smoke monster that we can animate to follow my lead character at the top. Um, I've been working with kind of a tornado-y thing. Um, so I think that's the best place to kind of start by just kind of adding a mesh of, say, like a cone, um, flipping that ice cream cone style. And so it's not maybe so exact and perfect. We'll go ahead and stretch it so it's a little more truly ice cream cone style uh, like that. So, you know, that's a tornado-y type thing. Um, and we can give this some sculpting by doing the same trick I did to the environments to make like mountains. So let's see if we can just grab some edges and kind of like bend sections of it out just to give it a little bit more weird depth and uh, let's make it stick out a little bit it's real quick and terrible hopefully just kind of grabbing some pieces here and making something kind of quick and messy will lend itself to the like unpredictability of smoke. It'll make it feel kind of weird. Let's see if we can we kind of have to keep there's no points along here. I could add some. But um let's look at that now. So yeah, that's a little more complicated. We'll give us some some shadows and such. Um, I don't have a texture in it right now, so what I might do is just start by taking a random texture that I already have down in here. We'll just add a new material. Um, do, 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 do. Yes, call it material one. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I'm slowly getting better at the, um, node-based system in the shader, so I'm going to go ahead and add texture, an image texture, throw this down here and connect it. And what I know I'm going to want to do is play with um, the, what are those called? Uh, the alpha layer, the opacity uh, later on. So we'll go ahead and just take this out for a second and just add a mix shader in here. And let's see, to do that, we're going to also need, because this is a principal BSDF, so we'll need a transparent BSDF. Where are you at? Oh, the coffee has not hit my brain yet. There we go. Translucent, transparent. Boom, down. All right. So I think this one goes to the top shader. This one goes to the bottom shader. And the mix of those two goes into our surface. Um, and we don't have an image yet, so it's populating purple. So we need a new, let's call this smoke test and hit OK. I'm going to keep it 1024 just so it's super light when it runs. It's like a 1K texture. I'm going to go to open image and I'm just going to go find something I've already got in here let's see from maybe from my characters i've been playing with different character textures um <laughs> yeah maybe we try this uh i thought i made like a weird thing recently but maybe not um so i'm gonna start with this uh Sand. How about that? So I got a sand texture here. Now, why are you not populating now that I've given you a thingy thing? 
Cafeteria One. That's not great. So we've got this here, and, you know, it's it's not great, but it's just a quick little demo of what I'm trying to maybe accomplish. So it's a very gray, rocky kind of disruptive texture um, with some little green patches in it. Um, let's go back into our material, and in our settings, I'll give it some backface coloring so we see it on both sides. We'll do an alpha blend. And now it's somewhat transparent, which is nice. And what I really want to try is this in this little um, object properties. If you have the Blender add-on, which is what I use for all of this, the hub, the Mozilla Hubs Blender add-on, uh, so that GLTFs have um, some sort of kind of like built-in uh, draw calls and, and properties. So I can hit Add Component. This is all the stuff that's typically inside of um, Mozilla Spoke to be able to call something at the scene level. So we've got the scene, visibility, nav mesh, skybox, elements, directional light, waypoints, images, spawners. Um, but in animation, they've got this UV scroll, which is really nice. So I go ahead and throw that on. Um, I'm not totally sure what half of this stuff does. Um, so usually I just throw some random numbers in here. I have to export it out because you can't, I haven't figured out how to preview it inside of Blender. So I'm just going to give it a speed of 0.1 and 0.1. I believe that's going on both axes. Um, and basically what it is doing to my understanding, go to UV editing, it has mapped out the mesh of our little tornado guy um, in this section. So it is basically trying to um, apply this, and it's going to basically just slide through this image again and again and again, which will look like animated movement. So it's going to look somewhat like smoke in that there is movement happening, and hopefully with the transparency layer, that will look even cooler um, and make the whole thing look like smoke is happening. So now um, we need to animate this really fast. So we'll just pull up animation, go into our dope sheet. Uh, you have to toggle this little guy on, which is auto keen. That actually is like going to record what I decide to do um, so that it keeps track of it. We pull this guy out and we have to start by saying, take the keyframe of where we're at. I'm sure there is a better, easier way to do this, but this is the version I know how to do. So wait, am I not? It's not recording a key. It's supposed to record a key down here. Do 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 do. We should be seeing a little populated key. So this is turned on. Hmm. Oh, Brendino. What have you done? Um, somebody watching this is going like, hey man, you didn't toggle this one thing. And I'm like, oh, that's the one thing I didn't toggle. Thanks, random person on the internet. Um, right, so this is not, oh, it's an edit mode. All right, put it in object mode. 
Ha ha. <laughs> you're not editing the animation. You're editing the object with animation. Sweet. All right. So now we have this starting off key for, uh, yeah, keyframe, just like video editing. So I've got, I've captured a rotational and a positional coordinate at the second frame. I'm going to back this up to this frame zero because this is where it's going to start. Now we're going to go to like frame 60, grab the rotation on this axis, and let's go 360 degrees. It's not quite doing it. There we go, 320, 330, 340, 350, 360, and a frame. Cool. So now what this should do is rotate it. Amazing. So that rotates. So now, uh, right now it's going from one frame 1 to frame 250. So it then just goes to that point and stops. But if I adjust down in this bottom corner, end frame of 60, what we should now be able to do is it will just loop this rotation. And we can see it kind of moves off its axis a little bit. So it, it's actually kind of like moving a little bit. So it's going to keep doing that, which I don't love. And it's kind of slow. So let me only do 20 frames of this action. And you can see it kind of like stops. It does it and stops, does it and stops. So to get around that more easily, I'm just going to start it at frame like three and end it at frame like 18 and see if slightly smoother. Let's end it at frame 17, 16. There we go. Now that just feels like it's endlessly spinning. But again, I don't love that it kind of like moves its coordinate. So let me absolutely make sure that it is starting. Yep, it's off its axis. So I'm gonna manually, manually type in zero, zero, zero. All right, you dummy. <laughs> Um, that put it at zero on this axis, at Z. So I'm going to click on this, just move it on the Z axis up. i got to keep going a little bit still. This is where, like, really getting comfortable with the, sh the sh I was going to say short keys, shortcuts, um, goes a long way. But I have not but I can talk to myself. So I've got that going for me. All right, so this is now, these location coordinates are there. One, eight, nine, five, eight on the z-axis. So it should end. One, eight, nine, five, eight. And then similarly, go back here. It's 22948, 22948 on the Y, negative 22948 on the Y, and it's 10383. Three. Was that negative? That was negative. Negative 10383, three. that number? Whoa, okay. Um, so now it spins a lot. So that is zero, and it ends back at zero. So midway through, I need to keep it from drifting. So let's see if we pull it back to the zero at the midway point. Will that keep us more centered through the entire spin. Better. It's more like a dreidel now. So we need to like 
really keyframe it in. Can you tell where my days go? <laughs> All right, this is better. It looks kind of chaotic, which is cool. Um, great. So now, letting the actual materials render out a bit. We can see it's somewhat transparent, and it's moving through, but we don't see the UV scroll, but we do see it spinning. So already this looks like chaotic and, you know, smoky and a little glitchy. Let's see if we can smooth out that animation even more. I feel like it's almost like there's a bit of a, there's like a wonk, wonk <laughs> happening. That looks fluid. Okay. Frame six to 10. Cool. So that's like a crazy, scary nightmare. And then we're also going to need object mode. We're going to add a mesh, probably some sort of a, I think a cylinder's good. Right? Because we want it to have some depth. We don't want it to just be a circle. So a cyl cylinder works. Let's bring this up. Smash it down, give a little rotation for us. Cool, smash that down. Mm -hmm. Call it out if you can guess what I'm doing. Oh wait, keep it like this for now. Um, the scale needs to be smaller, like this, cool. And I want to put this in the center of this. It's still actually a little thick. It's maybe like that. Cool. All right. Not bad. Not bad. Okay. Um, still need to come down on the scale a little bit. And I think I want to still... Where's my... Sculpt mode. See if my same grab will work. Um, hold on. Let's hide the cone for a second. Let's just focus on this cylinder. Just kind of trying to get a quick shape out of this. Pull it, pull it, pull it, grab it. You have one job, one job. Grab the thing. Oh no. I can get on the other side of it. Only grabbing one side. There we go. There we go. There we go. This is terrible. Yeah, I don't like this at all. If I grabbed it from this side, no, it only it still only pulls one because it's pulling it at the. <laughs> yeah, so that looks terrible. I'm just gonna undo all of that if I can maybe too far back yay all right uh let's see let's see let's see I can deform the mesh and this might at least help me visualize it a little more what I'm trying to do 
And there's probably better tools for this, but as with any piece of software, Blender does so many things that it is impossible for me to really know all of them. And so I have my limited toolkit of what I have figured out how to do. And that is pretty much the toolkit I keep coming back to. Because I'm like, at least I know how to get basic function out of these three things. So I'm seeing if I can just shape an evil eye. Kind of that classic, like, demon squinting with, like, that mad expression by like being pointed at a 45 degree angle because you know why be original when we can use classic storytelling tropes that we've all recognized for generations this looks terrible um just it's it's that it's so rounded I, I might have maybe it might have been better to have started with a less cylindrical thing but here's where we're at I'm kind of getting a little bit of a almost as like a bird um, if I kind of come down more here Hmm. No, I think the the point feels evil. You said it, dog. Ooh. Let's make fun about that. Now just make this slightly less rounded, maybe? Or did that help us now? That helped us know what it was. All right, so that's what that looks like ish from that direction <laughs> and now now just be exactly the same on on this axis no problem some problem basically just trying to get the top of it to be flat because then that will mean that I have matched both axes like what's going on here yep has to come up oh it's so bad oh it's so terrible there's like a divot in my eye for no reason. <laughs> no reason other than that I don't know what I'm doing. Excellent. All right, so bring that down here. It's almost like a speech bubble. How's this looking from this angle? Not great. Um, but it's got some shape to it. It's got some depth to it. I think that will then read like a thing. So... Let's just go back into object mode because we are limited on time here. Oh, look at that chunk in that eye. Oh, I, I don't know that we like that at all. Hold on. Do, 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 do. Nope, not vertex. Sculpt. Hmm. Well, now I've ruined it. <laughs> um. <laughs> hmm. Let's see, if I go back to the wireframe, I can just focus on this side to bring it up and match the other side. And we won't see things like this where it's like it's I can tell that it's higher on one side than the other go on down now there you go I 
Grab it, please. Come over here. Nice. There's that. There's that. Mm -hmm. Here we go. That's that's where I was having real issue. Why won't you grab that? Oh, because it's not a point. That'll do it. What's going on, man? Oh, am I turned up inside of itself? Well, that's not good. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Can't really tell. There we go. Hey, man. And what if we spent the whole day doing this? Wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> All right. Um, nope. 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 No. Okay. Um, this is not great, but this is what this is going to look like because we have a meeting for another piece of the show in less than 30 minutes. And so I got to get this one singular asset built. He said, and then he began mucking with a new part of it. Because he can't be stopped. Ooh, look at that nice curve. I wish I could make the top look like that. <laughs> um... And if anyone watching this is like, hey, man, do you know if you just hit, like, J, it'll do this thing? And I can be like, oh, cool, thanks. I'll do J next time. All right, let's just call this art. That's an object. That's an eyeball, obviously. And Apple, or Apple, Shift D gives me another one that I only want to move along the Y axis, put over here. And now I'm going to rotate it. rotate it 180 degrees cool so I now have two little eyes they probably need to be closer together like my eyes all right now I think if I option J if I can control J yes this is now one singular object Let's bring back our cone. Let's see that cone in the context of this. Look at that. Little eyes within our tornado man. He agreed. It's a smoke monster, Brendan. There's no gender with smoke monsters. What are you doing? <laughs> tornado person. Not even a person. It's a tornado creature. What are you doing? Um, all right. Oh, societal norms. You've taught us well. Um... All right, here we go. So we have eyeballs in this, and I want these eyes to kind of move while it moves. So back to our little keyframey situation. Delete the keyframes. Let's start here, because that is centered technically. Um, let's get the rotational data as well. There we go. We have some dope frames. Now, as it spins, you see it kind of goes out of the boundary there. So we want to keep it inside this region. Nice. Ooh, goes out there. This is why keyframes are so helpful. You can literally go to the frame 
and key in what I want it to look like at that exact moment. Lovely. Now, I like starting up here, and then I want to slightly drift down and over. And slightly drift down. <laughs> it looks like he's rocking it. Oh, because it's only between those two frames. Right, right, right. I forgot. I'm limiting this to a very specific rotation. Okay, so let's get rid of all other keyframes. This needs to be much more subtle. So up here. And really what we want is offset it by the most slight amount. So that's it staying put, and now in the middle of that, add a slight, might even be too much. Not nothing for now, for now. All right, so let's keep that. Now let's add some texturing to these eyes, a new material. Um, I think I have like a weird... The problem is we can't do really a lot of like glowy stuff in WebGL, um, or I cannot do a lot of stuff in WebGL. Uh, so I'm really limited to kind of an eerie texture that can just, it's why I use UV scrolling, um, is it's just sliding a flat material rather than image texture, base color, and new, let's see, red eyes. Okay. And surely I've got some sort of quick texture I can put on this just to test. And then I can go into Photoshop and actually like dial that in and make it look scarier. Here's an old smoke effect I did on something. Something called bubble modify. I don't think that's true. I don't think I want that. Um, what are you looking for? Start there. Development, characters. Let's look in our textures again. Let's just use this red texture, if that will work. Cool. So, it's not really, like, glowy. If I add this emission to it slightly, I think I want the strength to be like 0.5. Okay. So I now have this, which obviously doesn't look great, um, but it's not, not a thing. I'm gonna export this out as a GLTF or a GLB file. Um, this is a lovely standard of files that plays within 3JS. Um, we're just going to try a smoke monster quick. Um, UV point one. So I know what my settings were there. Animations. I may have forgotten a thing. But let's try this first. If I ungroup um, by NLA track, it should just take all animations in the thing and say, that's the animation, and just play it. Uh, we'll see if that's true. Um, extensions include UVs, probably modifiers. Um, great. Let's export that and see what happens. Exporto. All right, now we're going to go to... And I've got to add this into GL. DomMcCurdy.com has this GLTF viewer, which is so helpful and generous that it was given to the community. So hit OK. Takeaway Blender, we're now on that website, which has not been 
framed. I fixed it. Great. Hit upload. Go into my desktop. Find the thing we just made. And perfect. <laughs> um, for some reason, my texture isn't rendering. My animation is playing, so that's exciting. Um, but it's also playing and stopping. So it's actually playing the full animation, not the subset of animation that I said was OK to play. So let's head back into Blender and figure out why all of this is bad. Um, what is wrong with this material? Is it too heavy? Is, is that the issue? I don't know. Um, texture, paint, image, resize. Yep, it is giant. 1024 by 1024. Hit OK. Now I'm going to just draw on it and see that, that that does some things here. Probably not good things, but it does some things. So we'll be able to follow that that smoke. Um, similarly, let's come into the eyes. Let's make our brush slightly smaller. Give me a little window. Uh, radius 10. And if we look at the UV editing shading, texture paint. I think I need to resize this as well. Yep. 1024, 1024. OK. Yeah, I see that line showed up here, so. So here's a slight little glint. In their eye. Put that there. Put that there. It's absolutely terrible, but it gives us a marking of where we might put something later on when we actually do more robust textures. GLTF. Now on the animation track, limit to playback which I thought was set to just those you know, limit to playback range. So what's what's going on, man? Um, what we're going to do quickly then instead is go into animation because our play, playback range is marked. Um, we're going to hit A to control that should have controlled all, but I can see it's not picking up both my cone and my cylinder. I think it is. Um, object, animation, bake. So I'm not going to say start frame, end frame, frame step. Hit OK. Now in our nonlinear animation, if I hit this push down action and push down action, it's now created these on an NLA track that should be playable. I'm going to say no, don't group, no group, grupo, export, and now file, export. GLTF, animation, let's group it, and then we can look at the difference. No group, yes group. Save. Now let's go back into our GLTF viewer. Fresh, upload from our desktop. It did not save these. Neat.
I'm getting a Python traceback error that I've never gotten before. How thrilling for everyone. It has to do with the GLTF add-on. Gather meth, mesh, Python. Okay, so of course, nothing can be easy. Everything is terrible. That is the lesson. That is always the lesson. Um, great. Oh, dang it. Well, this is why I don't make videos, because something that I thought was going to take half an hour be super easy and something based entirely on something I knew how to do invited a brand new problem I've never seen before that is probably going to take my entire day. So, uh, yay, this thing that was supposed to be quick and easy because it was going to be painless has now turned into my entire day to, yet again, for those keeping score at home, look terrible. <laughs> Okay, cool. This has been Why Do Anything from Brendan Bradley, signing off. <laughs>